Hello, my name's Amir Suleiman. I'm a voluntary community worker here in Peterborough. I've been in Peterborough for about five and a half years and have tried to put roots down here via voluntary work, uh, particularly through the mosque that I'm standing in, which is the Masjid Khadija and Islamic Centre on Cromwell Road in Peterborough. And I've been a member of this mosque for the best part of five years. Uh, lots of initiatives take place here. Uh, myself, I have been um, a fully practicing Muslim since probably my mid-twenties. Uh, born Muslim, but practicing fully from uh, the early age of about 21, 22. Um, and I'm also a director of a local community station in Peter Records Salaam Radio, affiliated with this mosque as well, and other mosques in the community. I'm also a freelance radio presenter at BBC Radio Cambridgeshire, um, and I'm a spokesperson for this mosque for, regarding media interviews. And uh, lots of initiatives have come out of this mosque, like Open Days and uh, working with the Joe Cox Foundation to bring about change in people's opinions about Islam and general perceptions and misconceptions about Muslims. So today we're going to talk about Islamophobia, a, a sad topic that unfortunately is rife in our society. Um, and a logical starting point would be, what is Islamophobia? And I'm reminded of the excellent definition which has been worked out by the all-party parliamentary group on British Muslims, um, a number of scholars and experts and they've gone up and down the country and have all come to the same conclusion and a working adopted definition of what is Islamophobia and I quote Islamophobia is rooted in racism and is a type of racism that targets expressions of Muslimness or perceived Muslimness and I think it's an excellent definition which has been significantly adopted by the likes of the Labour Party the Liberal Democrats um, I think uh, uh, Plaid Cymru have also uh, adopted this and many other groups up and down the country um, and part of my personal mission if you like is to try and get more political parties particularly the Conservative Party to adopt and recognize that definition. So Islamophobia as I said is, um, is sadly rife in, in the community and societies we live in um, and it manifests itself in various different forms sadly um, that can be across social media it can be in the workplace for young people in schools, it can be on the street and particularly hard for females who are seen as easy targets. Um, and unfortunately we see this growing. Um, there are different levels of Islamophobia as well. You have it um, in the mainstream media as well, in the way stories uh, around um, Muslims or around terrorism are portrayed, sometimes incorrectly. That's not a sweeping statement, that's just some pockets of the, of the media industry. Um, but if we talk about females, for example, I mean, there have been incidents, particularly after Article 50 was triggered and after the referendum vote, immediately in the days after that, we heard, and particularly locally here, we've seen examples of our sisters, as we call them in our faith, walking down the street, in the high street, and people spitting at their feet or having their headscarf, what we call the hijab, removed forcibly. Um, just derogatory comments hurled at them and they're seen as easy targets because they're women and unsurprisingly from those ignorant um, rather lost souls that are, are, are committing these awful crimes they are from men so there are instances of female on female but it's predominantly men that are attacking women uh, which just makes the, the whole um, ordeal even worse for the victim um, hate crime and hate incidents is on the rise. We're not just talking Islamophobia, we're talking anti-Semitism, we're talking against LGBTQ, um, you know, disabilities, uh, general race, gender, whatever it might be, uh, sexual identity, and it is something which sadly is, seems to be growing. And um, social media and the media in general, ignorance, the lack of wanting to look into things yourself rather than just taking the opinion of what's force-fed to you through the TV or the radio or the print, whatever it might be, I think if we all just took a step back and tried to look at the bigger picture and maybe think there's another side to this story, we feel, as a community, and I certainly feel, that that might be a way to break down misconceptions around one's faith, in this instance, Islamophobia. Um, we also talked about it in the workplace. There is subconscious Islamophobia that takes place. There's, there are statistics from the Muslim Council of Britain which will show us that, generally speaking, Muslims uh, on a yearly um, basis will receive less pay than 
maybe their white British counterparts. So the, the, you know, things do go on in the workplace. Uh, getting a job is more difficult now as a Muslim just because of your name. There was an experiment by the BBC a few years ago where uh, CVs, identical CVs were sent for a job application. The only difference was the name was different. And surprisingly, or rather unsurprisingly, the British sounding name got more responses and calls for interview than the Muslim name. So we are facing a challenge. It is a problem. There is a lot of work to be done. Communities can do more at grassroots level to try and alleviate these concerns. But we believe it's an uphill struggle, um, as p particularly when the government currently doesn't adopt this Islamophobia definition and we're promised uh, an inquiry into Islamophobia into the current government, which hasn't occurred. These things do not bode well. They do not translate well to the general public's view of what Islam is. And we believe that has a lot to do with why Islamophobia is on the rise.